about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. In a very strange way, God's treasures are stored in earthen vessels. And it's a known fact that there are no perfect men. In fact, the quest for perfection as blamelessness and faultlessness is exhausting and unnecessary. Replace perfection with sincerity. Are we, to, are we together now? Yes. Elijah was a temperous man. Moses was an angry man. Your Jesus entered a temple with a whip. He didn't report to the scribes and the Pharisees like a very civilized citizen of a nation should do jesus the jesus you love and so worship took a whip and began to flog people that's why the disciples were confused don't blame them this guy would teach on one side teach on love and then he's whipping people again and the disciples became confused who are you somehow you act like elijah when you weep then you act like someone else when you love then you act like a prophet who are you it was a very necessary question because of all the dimensions they saw are we together you need forbearance somehow we have this this wrong expectation just because a man is a ceo a pastor uh, maybe a bishop some spiritual leader or a father a mother we expect blamelessness faultlessness perfection are we together as the basis for communicating honor if that is what you search for the only person you will find that qualification on is jesus the exalted christ not even the one who walked on the earth the one who is seated on the throne there are many 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 people today who would not honor their parents why they would tell you my father was not a responsible man my mother was not a responsible person this and that and that my lecturer is not this nigeria is a scattered country they will say um and then we we bring that 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 pain to the church and begin to have unrealistic expectations on men of god i remember years ago someone saw me eating and he exclaimed as though i was it was a sin he said apostle you are eating i said you see the kind of thing this these are the kinds of teachings that we must manage and i submit to you that most of these teachings came from us men of god in a bid in a bid to create that that um that sense of holiness and to preserve the purity and the power of the anointing we we derived a lot of pride in making people feel that we are not human and Jesus wept very powerful scripture and God rested very powerful scripture and Jesus was unhungered very powerful scripture these scriptures were kept in the Bible for a reason are we together now there are four faces when you read the revelation daniel ezekiel all of them when they were caught up to the throne room they saw four faces there's no time to teach on this the first face is the face of a lion represents dominion and power but if all you have and if that is the only dimension you have there is trouble 
these phases are the progressions of all that we need to be to attain the full stature in Christ the face of a lion dominion power but if all you have is authority and power pride will kill you so the next phase becomes the balance of the former one the face of a calf it lets you know that the purpose of power is for service are we together now the face of a calf and then there is a side effect to servanthood too people would take you for a ride they would destroy you they will wake you up by two o'clock and blackmail you emotionally and say i thought you said god sent you to us and in a bit to show that you're a sincere servant they can take you to your grave early so the next phase becomes the balance the face of a man god reminds you that even though you are empowered you are human so that you are not ashamed of your humanity the side effect of being human is that you can reduce yourself to be so carnal that you will give in cheaply to the flesh you will give in cheaply to natural things and not be able to exhibit that godlike character then the last phase becomes the balance the face of the flying eagle that although you are human you are also divine if all of these dimensions are not captured in your christian experience there will be a great imbalance if all you are is a lion you are in trouble pride will destroy you if all you are is a calf men will take you for a ride until they kill you if all you are is a man that's satan's domain he will eat you up because his strength is working in the flesh and you cannot be an eagle just for nothing it has to be the holy spirit did not just hover around alone he came upon jesus he came upon the apostles he came upon men are we together you need forbearance patience 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 do you know what it took for elijah to receive the mantle of elijah for disturbing elijah fire would come on you are you aware of that that elijah was strict you disturbed his time of worship he won't teach you and say okay take it easy um, next time when you come you don't have to fight i'm a human being i'm sensible no the fire would teach you a lesson then you will go back and teach others yet elisha walked with such a man don't blame the sons of the prophet for their anger i'm sure they were already getting angry what a vicious wicked lecturer we don't know why the god of the hebrews would be using such a man isn't it amazing that while you are angry god still loves the person you hate this is the strange thing about god now you be god almighty god you know be my no you know now you be god almighty god you're not a man listen so you can look at your father you can look at your mother be so embarrassed being associated with them and yet they remain your parents forever the idea of disowning people is just a mental issue there's no such thing as that there is that that's a it's just a way of expressing pain and disappointment there's no such thing as disowning anyone connected by blood lord why did you give me such a father why did you give me such a mother and god says because of where i'm taking you to you need to learn how to forbear there are many of us today it's amazing that you are thanking god for passing through what you prayed that you will come out in a hurry for if you did not go through that school we will not be able to manage the grace the anointing the influence why did you give me such a pastor and god says because i know your tendencies i know what you can do i know what you cannot do and so i planted you so that you are built you are established you need a lot of forbearance let me tell you the difference between forbearance and forgiveness <laughs> forbearance is a spiritual and a psychological state where you are prepared to see that act that mistake that weakness repeat indefinitely so your mind is already prepared to accommodate it there is a difference if i step on your toes by mistake that's a mistake if i say sorry 
you forgive me but if you know i'm going to do it a thousand times you need to switch from forgiveness to forbearance that means it's no longer new are we together yes if you cannot forbear anything that has to do with relationships will fail in your hands you will need forbearance more than forgiveness A woman once told me, said, Apostle, you need to pray for my husband. I said, why? He said, he scatters clothes everywhere in the house. I said, Madam, this is more than an issue of forgiveness. You need forbearance. Could it be that this is why God brought it? He said, that's the point. I fix the house. He comes back and in 10 minutes, the house, I said, Madam, this is the excellency of being a woman. If it was like you, what would be your ministry? And the woman felt disappointed. She felt sad. Apostle, this can't be you. I mean, I expect you to say, forbearance forbearance God why did you just send me all of a sudden you would have prepared me and said next year I'm going to ask you to go God says stand up now go to Abuja tomorrow go to Lagos tomorrow go to London tomorrow <laughs> do you forgive him you have to create that accommodation because he will do it again I assure you Take this seed and come and give your pastor. Do you think that's the last time you will do it? We're talking God here. Forbearance. Many of us do not have the quality of forbearance. That's why little things offend us. We are very offended. We are very pained. We have piles of unnecessary names on our books. Angry, blaming people. Black book, book blue book. You know, book of this and that and that. And then we get angry. The lifespan of our joy is at least two weeks with any relationship. That's a very dangerous way of living. You must cultivate forbearance. Someone say forbearance. If you do not have the quality of forbearance, you will not be able to communicate honor. Now, very quickly, how do you show honor? Ways of expressing honor. Number one, to express honor to a man, to a people, to a nation, to a territory, Let's focus on a man. I wish I can talk just about your pastor for a case study. Number one, have deep respect for the person and the office of that man of God or that individual. In this case, your pastor. Let me zoom it to Apostle Goodhart. For instance, since I'm talking to Rogic, and by extension, the body of Christ. You cannot say you have honor and you show honor without having a deep respect for the person and the office many people have respect for the office but they do not have respect for the person have you seen such a thing they respect the boss the office of the boss but they do not respect the individual you truly have to show respect to the individual as a person and then the office very very important number two celebrate him or her openly and sincerely i'm showing you ways of communicating honor celebrate him or her openly and sincerely sincerely is the key word here it's very easy to celebrate openly but sincerely have you seen people who told you thank you wow you're a wonderful person and then as soon as you shut the door not by word of knowledge there is an atmosphere that comes out from the same room and you know that everything that was done was just a state managed activity sincerity is powerful it gives credence to everything you're doing celebrate him or her openly and sincerely number three you must still buttressing on point two you must genuinely celebrate those you honor it is impossible to claim you honor god you honor laws you honor men without celebrating them number three you must contribute to improving his or her life you cannot be one who is communicating honor without actively contributing. If you want to show a man, a government, an individual, the kingdom, God, honor, 
you have to be a contributor that's why service is a very powerful indication of honor service let them do it lord may your name be lifted high it's a very powerful song but there has to be someone who makes that happen i have profound respect and reverence for people who serve god i have profound respect and reverence for people who serve in any platform and more importantly those who serve me people who serve god and serve me as touching the assignment i have profound regard for them because service is costly are we together there are people who are never contributors let me tell you this ensure that in your lifetime you become part of the history the story of many people this is one way to remain transgenerationally relevant you be part of the story of people let someone be able to say while i was rising or as i rose you were part of the story don't come out of nowhere and expect a stake in someone's life when you did not make any investment our world is full of angry people today who claim that you know me you were my brother you were my sister it's a shame that you are now the senator it's a shame that you are now apostle it's a shame that you are now wealthy and you will not even look down on me no if you were not there when i was on the cross don't expect to be invited when i sit on the throne one of the easiest way to succeed in our world is find someone building something great and be part of that vision contribution to service there are people today who gave people 50 naira that 50 naira has become an estate today are we, is that correct let people remember you joseph served the wine presser in the prison and even after two years of delay god gave the king a dream and the man said i remember my wrong what wrong the wrong of not honoring a man who blessed me the king could not sleep that night because mordecai had showed him honor by participating in his success and he ignored mordecai you must be a contributor never find yourself in any place any platform especially such a great house as this and not be an active contributor an active participant do not just be a recipient you have to be a participant it was on the strength of service i communicated my honor to the great veteran of faith now of blessed memory reinhard bonke to receive certain graces from his life there was a crusade and people were there to receive several men of god who had gone there with hunger fasting to receive i knew that honor is the key to access there were hundreds maybe tens of thousands quite honestly of people on that ground and after the first day i became dissatisfied i knew i needed to do something i went from 3 a.m i was at that crusade ground i saw them wheeling people on wheelchairs i saw them bringing in people crutches trying to prepare the people i said please can i be part of this they said no 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 there's a committee that's been trained i said you don't know where i'm coming from committee or no committee i must walk on this crusade ground and so eventually they found out they couldn't do anything with me and about me and they just allowed me while i was willing some of the people i was praying in the spirit i said lord this is how it will also happen in my meetings i'm showing honor for a man who has found this grace behind every glory there is a story there truly is a story service i remember many years ago i used to play the keyboard for a man he was part of he was a, a a man of god but then he had a prison ministry they were part of a team that had once gone to preach for basanjo when he was in prison never did anyone tell me thank you the only thing i remember getting was one bottle of fanta and one cassette i would carry my own keyboard and trek from home with joy like a madman to that place do you have a track record of service he says gather unto me my saints psalm 50 and verse 5 they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice 
you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless that's the covenant make sure that you are a participant those who serve are not those who come to church those who serve are those who make the kingdom come through their service we call it service when we come to church but in truth it is those who are active participants when you downsize a company for those of you who have the privilege of leading great organizations there are people who no matter how many people you are downsizing you will not downsize them why because they have shown the extent of their commitment and their participation you must contribute to the improvement of his life a kind advice for many of us who are trusting god in various ways and at different levels to rise do not seek things when you meet the great your point of contact is their need you must find their need and that becomes your entrance point into their lives this african mentality of of latching on to people who are blessed or wealthy or influential or have keys or gatekeepers captains of industry from the standpoint of need or standpoint of tribalism it will only recycle pain in our lives every man's need is your point of contact to him so when you want god's attention don't shout and say god give me an attention you find out where his heart is go there hallelujah one of my one of my is, is one of the people that god is helping me raise he lives with me works with me back then when i was in zaria and he's still there till now by god's grace he's, he's almost done today with school and he came as a little boy one of the things that he did was he came and started sweeping he started sweeping my house every morning he would come he would just sweep i said who are these boys drive them away they would not go and he would come to just sweep and one day i looked at him and i said no let's give this person a chance to be great his dad died and then my neighbors told me that when his father was alive he, he did the same thing to them and i said now here's an opportunity today this boy i think he's a, he should be a graduate now his life completely changed he literally lives with me no blood connection whatsoever every man's need i repeat is his point of contact there are many people who you never get a text message from until there is a need so you have some artificial greetings greetings calvary greetings in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ um it's been a while since i spoke with you uncle and the man is waiting for the other side of the text because he knows he's coming just to let you know sir that um in two months my rent and just as god has used you you, see, you, you don't there is there is nobody who will love you passionately and invest their time their energy to that kind of life just to let you know that i've been praying for you sir i've seen your schedules i know that you're busy should you want me to help you achieve anything to help you do anything i'm readily available now that's an intelligent way to get access is why many family members never receive from those who are blessed because they always come with an entitlement mentality you are my uncle you are my auntie you are my pastor you are my tribesman you must bless me some threaten you with prayer i prayed for you to get there you know all, all sorts of things i apologize i hope i'm not wasting your time but this is very powerful every man's need is his point of contact a few weeks ago i i sat at table with um, president buhari's photographer and i was listening to the young man i just wanted to hear him talk to me i said how did you become you're not a muslim you're not from the north how did this happen when this gentleman narrated his story i said you truly deserve to be where you are the president would not take any snapshots he would not do anything if that gentleman is not there in fact i was told that he's one of the few people that can actually play with the president like play 
Honor. 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 There's nobody, nobody that that gentleman does not have access to. When you are the president's worker slash friend slash playmate, that's more than a governor. More than, because they all come and he's there. He's the one who snaps them. Most of the people who turn others down are not even the employees. They are the gate men. The, have you seen people like that? They watch you and they say, no problem. You do all you are coming. Oh, God loves me. Can you let him know I'm around? He says, that's all right. You sit down there for two, three, four, five hours. Because a human being you despised decided to punish you. Not God, oh. You keep having dreams and visions of the open door. But a man you dishonor stops you. Every great man's need, I repeat, is his point of contact. You want the Lord to continue to use the grace upon Apostle Goodheart and his wife to bless you. Don't just sit down and say, what sermon am I coming to receive today? You are my pastor. No, be discerning, for instance. Lord, how can I make their lives better how can what can i do that will make them more efficient for some of you god will give you an instruction and say be a personal intercessor for them that's it there may be a prayer department that prays but god will say you there are things i will reveal to you that no one will see let that be your project to pray are we together now yes for someone god will tell you you say make sure that apostle and his wife never have to think where will i get fuel from make their work easy these are various ways these are not gimmicks sincerely let me tell you i've had the privilege by the grace of god and i say this with all humility god has connected me to so many people cutting across several industries and the point of contact is always me intending to give almost never to receive in fact let me tell you sincerely it was until recently my greatest weakness in my life is receiving it would take a lot for me to receive things when i started ministry i never knew there was something called honorarium that you actually can preach and they give you apple banana and say thank you i couldn't believe it when you become obsessed with giving the world will look for you. Nobel Prize is not given to receivers. Givers, contributors. Take this mentality not just for those above you, your contemporaries, and even those under you. Be a giver. Make sure when you meet people, you're not the one stretching your hands. What can you do for me? I'm not just talking in terms of finances. I'm passionate about giving every time I see people I'm thinking what can I do if I can offer prayer why not if I can offer an advice why not plant yourself the lives of people and you will watch yourself rise are we there so you contribute to improving the life of that individual next point how do you express honor pray for the person you truly honor consistently prayer is powerful you can never have enough people praying for you anyone who truly honors you under god should pray for you and anyone you truly honor under god you must invest a portion of your prayer life praying for them in this instance pray for apostle good heart sincerely pray for his wife pray for the family pray for the church pray for everyone you don't have to be part of the prayer department and you don't have to be known i have i have a list of people churches men and women of god mission agencies except i do not pray i pray for all of them i have the map of this this city I have the map of Nigeria, I have the map of Africa, I have the map of the world. Many times I'm praying and the Lord will instruct that I lay my hands and just begin to speak. 
in this kingdom we gain by losing when you forget about yourself and you focus on others soon the world will see your selflessness they will see the purity and the sincerity of your intention and they will come in numbers you cannot imagine to invest in your life hallelujah you must pray for them it's difficult to criticize who you truly pray for it's difficult to find fault on and with who you truly truly pray for most people criticize every they criticize the body of christ they criticize pastors they criticize their ceos businessmen politicians because they do not pray for them i am telling you you tried try spending an hour praying for someone then immediately after try to criticize the person and see how difficult it is criticism is proof of prayerlessness that the people do not pray and if you don't pray for others it means you don't even pray at all because if you are truly a person of prayer you should be so yielded he was speaking to those in the church in Thessalonica and he said, brethren, that you pray for us. It was a request. Paul was a man who had met Jesus Christ. And yet he still needed the prayers of the saints. Let me tell you this. Please look up. I have learned through history, through scripture, through mentorship, and now by experience, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Can I tell you this? trust god for grace to love and admire everybody who is in a position of prominence from any angle and pray for them you do not know the attacks if you are elijah jezebel is coming if you are daniel the gods of the Pers the patients and the medis they are coming after you if you are jesus the scribes the pharisees and everyone is coming many have no idea on the attack that an average man of god has it doesn't matter whether you have results or not only god will tell the number of people who take our names to shrines every day only god knows the number of poisons i have taken in my lifetime is until we meet with jesus christ my phone is full of prophecies from prophets and people F, this is not today it started years ago apostle be careful you are about, i was praying and i saw your name in the shrine i said what do i do did i take it there it's already there what what do we do i just <laughs> you'll be surprised your name is there too oh, you don't don't look at me and feel bad for me our names are all there provided what do you think listen 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 yes sir the moment you aspire to rise to your highest level in destiny that becomes your offense for as long as you do not have a child that's all right the day you give birth to twins something is wrong with your shirt something is wrong with your trouser something is wrong with the way you talk there is a side effect greatness comes with such a cost when god takes you patiently thank him he's helping you to get used to battles because for every level i tell you sincerely there are devils is god speaking to us this morning lord why is it that the moment i became a ceo where are all these attacks coming from the people who used to love me before they didn't love you they loved your level they were your level was a comfort to their mediocrity and every time you stretch further let me tell you this among the many things that true success does is it kills excuses from mediocres now people can ask a question that they can't answer you gave excuse that in nigeria people do not rise you gave excuse that are ah, there but someone is building and we, this person used to come to your house and beg before what then becomes your excuse 
are we blessed next time you see your boss don't stand to say this man that man no next time you see a politician next time you see apostle goodhart and his wife stand here what you are looking at is a testament of endurance battles you may never know it's easy to talk it's easy to criticize let me speak with a bias for men of god many people do you know that there are times i'm minding my business after strenuous weeks of ministration i just want to rest suddenly i now start having visions of someone's trouble and sometimes you hate the fact that your eyes have been opened in the realm of the spirit because now you don't you provided you've seen it you can't claim you are not aware oh god open my eyes it has an implication because the moment you want to rest here he comes the spirit of grace moving from house to house who can intercede to save this man and god says you are my trusted one i know you are tired but can i come to you again at a point in my life i became so exhausted i would travel let me tell you this sincerely i would put my head in the aircraft and only just wake up when it lands because of how tired i am I'm trying to meet a conference and while that is happening everybody is happy apostle is coming and i'm just looking at them sometimes when i'm dressing i look at myself in the mirror and say wow why why did you become apostle <laughs> joshua selman and many times i would promise that as soon as the service is over i'm not seeing anybody i'm tired and their compassion betrays me again the moment i look at them i remember him and i remember myself and i remember what he did on the cross suddenly that energy returns again and sometimes i'm talking and people say apostle we're seeing a, what they call this thing when you don't sleep we're seeing it and i told them i said you don't know what is my spirit that is standing and preaching there but this other man is as tired as anything and the moment that happens here comes church members with all due respect why didn't you wait to see me i called you to come to my house why didn't you come and whilst you're tired you're saying lord can you raise people who understand what it means to carry this cross i was told a story years ago that a man of god was so frustrated his congregation frustrated him and he had a vision and he went to heaven and he was complaining i don't know if it was just a fiction to to explain something or it was true and he was complaining to the lord and saying lord you carried a big cross and put it on my head this is too much i'm, I'm sick and tired i don't want to commit suicide and then that the lord took room and the room had several crosses some small some big and he said you go and carry the one you want yourself and he quickly went and picked a small one and the lord said but that's exactly the one you have you just picked what you had and then the man stood there and said so who are those carrying this one he said they are on earth oh. they laugh they smile but that's what is on their head do you know that ministers also have problems some of them have family problems some of them have problems with their children some of them have problems with relatives some of them whilst they are preaching there is an obituary text that is coming you just lost your loved one and yet they have to compose themselves the ethics of ministry demands that you put the people before you do you think such people are deserving of honor sometimes you you finish walking by four and you run away you you see your boss still in the office by 12 hello sir where are you are you home no, I'm still here. I'm just trying to tidy up something. And you call him by six. Where are you? I had to quickly catch a flight. I'm on my way to London. Sir, do you rest at all? Well, God is faithful. And then you say they don't do anything and they just make money for nothing. And God is hearing you. And you wonder why prosperity runs away from you. Truly, let me tell you, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. The average man of God in Africa, the average man of God in Nigeria, many people have no idea of the spiritual sacrifices. 
I preach an average of three to four sermons every week. And it's not what you want, it's the topic you are given. Do you know that when the anointing rests upon you whilst you are ministering, I'm going to be praying for you shortly. Do you know that it has a physical effect on your body? Medical people will tell you. So the higher your anointing, there is a real effect. It's why very anointed people, except they create a medical system around their life, they don't live very long. They don't know why. It's not just an attack from Satan. Believe what I tell you. While they are in the room alone crying, under medication, Benny Hinn was almost collapsing one time. He wanted to go for a crusade and he found out that he just fell and his doctors came and said, what is wrong with you? And they checked him. They said, sorry, you can't go for that crusade. He said, souls, my heart will not let me rest. I need, people need to be saved. Please listen to me. The spirit of dishonor is a dangerous spirit. When Jesus hung upon that cross, you laid aside your majesty, you gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands of those you have created. Do you know historically human beings are experts at persecuting their saviors so if you are a savior be ready for dishonor of all sorts in your lifetime are we together look what jesus went through on the cross a 33 year old man hanging naked i hope you know he was hung naked all the coverings around him in movies is just for social reasons he was hung naked the lamb of god and yet you tell someone about it and he looks and says so what did i ask him to die for me was anything wrong with me he left heaven it's like being a professor and because you are a professor alone you throw away that title you start from kindergarten but this time around not alone until you become a professor again something you already wear you threw it because you were alone and you had to pick other people so that while you get the phd all of them also have that phd too that's what jesus did he had no need he had no lack but he was alone and he said no i'd rather go to hell for you than to remain in heaven without you and yet you preach that glorious gospel and people trivialize it It's painful to go through so much and then deliver what you brought and people look at it and trivialize it that's why spiritual things don't come on just everybody God discerns people who have honor and value hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.